So how's everybody doing today? I can't stand ca ca cabination. What is sparkling ice? It's this amazing, I gotta turn off my virtual background so you can see. These drinks. This one's almost empty so it's hard to read. Ah, cool. So sparkling ice was named after Lenovo, who was named after its founder, Leonard Ova. <laughs> you guys have way too far aging conversations. Um, DJ sparkling ice. I'm still marveling over the uh, eight pages of of uh, discussion on pens that you guys went through in uh, in the Discord channel. We are getting on to 445, so hopefully we will start relatively soon. Um, we're at 76 participants. I'm missing a few that I'm expecting, so. Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening. We're starting to show up. Nice background, Frank. Thank you. My real room is too boring. I have my bird wall behind me. Nice. Birds. The one thing I really want is good lighting, no matter what room I'm in. I look like a ghost or a, in the dark. Yeah, you're kind of ghosty. I am now in that time of year when, uh, well, all times of year, I'm at that time of day when the only ray of sun I get down in my basement comes out and hits my green screen. So you can kind of see it right up in the corner there. Um, but soon enough, the sun will be down and then we'll, uh, we'll be much less <sighs> visible in the dark. Seeing some of our external presenters showing up, um, we'll, I just to, to kind of prep you all. I've got anybody who sent me slides. I've got, I've got there. Uh, otherwise we can, uh, you know, switch over to, to you. Uh, I think that's relatively doable. I know it's, I know it's doable. I, I've done it before. Hopefully I'll be able to do it smoothly. Um, I'm out of practice it's the start of the semester. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to run through some housekeeping first, um, so, some announcements and things like that. Uh, and then we'll go into our external present presentations, and then uh, we will uh, go into our existing presentations, and uh, and then again, you know, we'll, we'll go into 
uh, new presentations primarily next Tuesday. And then on Friday, we're going to all get together and, and uh, set up some Discord rooms and try to get everybody working in the uh, on setting up their, their own projects and getting that kind of... Uh, I'm going to turn off my camera. It doesn't seem to be doing any good. Um, anyway, that's that's the plan. Uh, we are sitting at 124 in the room, so I think we're probably pretty close. What do you think, guys? Are we ready to get going? And uh, in case anybody's concerned about it, I am actually, uh, you know, we are video recording this, so I think... My machine is doing a slowdown like I haven't seen in quite some time. So um, maybe what we'll do is unmaximize the screen and see if that works. Um, just kind of do it. this way instead. No, it just goes right back. Yeah, my, we're doing 56 frames per second. I'm not sure why it doesn't seem like it's coming out very good. Maybe we're having a, another... Uh, Glitch with the network. All right, um, let's let's get ourselves started. Uh, who goes first here today? Olivia, it looks like. Yep, I think so. So, uh, welcome everybody to the second day of Arcos. And today is project pitch day one. That means that today we will have external projects pitching as well as existing projects that have already been in Arcus, you know, at least a semester before. Uh, beep. I beeped. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, your slides are all funky looking now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on just a second. Let me see if we can reset this. Download more RAM. That isn't even anywhere near what I have being displayed. So, um, we have not had this problem. So this is uh, good. We get to practice troubleshooting. Uh, WebEx. Yeah. Huh. Let me stop um, my video for a second and see if I can get this back. That's fair. Well, we do have more participants just slowly streaming in, so uh, perhaps it is a beneficial thing. Okay, let's uh that did not help. Mm -hmm. I'm moving it all over the place on my end. It's just not moving on on uh, the other. Let me try one more thing. We can do. Um, I can do uh, present. Hate to kick everybody out and start it over again, but that is 
always an option. Um, and now we will come in. I don't need me on this. Kind of brute force. Yeah. Um, actually, that's not what I wanted either. Let's go back to our layout. Ah, maybe that'll work. It is just not cooperating. We can see your slides now. Are they changing? Yes. Importantly? Okay. I don't know what that was, but whatever it was, was a little funky. Um, welcome to Technology Day. I'm going to stay in this form as opposed to uh, another form. And uh, let's just kick this off. Okay. Uh, welcome to Arcos Meeting 2. Olivia, take it away. Sure thing. Second attempt, let's go. <laughs> uh, so today is Arcos's first project pitch day. So today we are going to be having external projects to Arcos pitching, as well as pre-existing projects that have already been, um, have already existed within Arcos before. Beep. Before we get to that, I would also like to mention um, the existence of the Arcos handbook. So the Arcos Handbook has been updated significantly recently, primarily by Frank. Thank you, Frank. Uh, and it now serves as the single source of truth for all things Arcos. It has details on grading, the semester outline, meeting calendar, code of conduct, documentation for new project leads, and a lot more. So if you have any questions about the course, make sure that you check out the handbook first. And if it's not in the handbook, be sure to mention that to us and we'll see that it's added to the handbook. Beep. I think this is my only slide. It's just to remind you that we're at the end of January. We're at the end of the first week of the semester. We're still in the, uh, in the honeymoon stage as it were, getting acquainted. Um, this is the first pitch day. Um, after next week, at the end of next week, we're going to transition into executing on the project, and that'll be the bulk of the semester. Uh, and we won't even worry about wrapping up just yet. Yeah? All right, it looks like she's still not back, so I will fill in for Nia. Okay. So this is the initial project definition slide. Basically, we're currently in that right now. It's the first two weeks, so this is obviously the end of week one. Next week will be the conclusion of this. Basically, just members interested in running their own projects will pitch their projects today, as well as next meeting. So you'll see, you'll hear a ton of projects today. I think the list is something we're getting roughly maybe 10 or 15 now. So lots of exciting things to look forward to. Following that, we're going to have project pairing, which is where you actually pick a project that you want to work on. And then you contact that project and hopefully they accept you and then you get to work on that project. You want to have your project picked by Friday the 5th, though. So you get another couple days, I guess a week, um, and then you can begin writing your proposal for the semester. Next slide, please. All right, so here is another call for mentors. Mentors are vital to the mission of Arcos, and we need a bunch of them. We've had about 10 people so far. We're looking to double that. So if you were a previous mentor before or a consistent Arcos member, definitely please consider becoming a mentor this semester. Uh, there's a message in the announcements channel on Discord for a couple more details and a link to sign up. Next slide. And then I've also added this mentor duty slide, so that way you can kind of get a better idea what it, what it means to be a mentor. So basically, for the most part, mentor duties just consist of you get assigned to a small group of projects, and you just basically keep an eye on them and answer any questions that they might have. You also do a little bit of grading on the status updates and the mid to end year reviews. So that takes generally maybe a half hour. It's not super, not super intense. And then we also have a weekly mentor meeting. Again, also half hour to an hour, not super high. So it's roughly an hour to a week for mentor duties. 
And then these duties also count towards your Arcos grade and they reduce the weight of the other portions of that grade. So the end, the total amount of work you have to do for Arcos ends up being roughly the same, just a little bit different. Oops, sorry for a moment, I forgot to unmute. So uh, now we will begin with the project pitches. And um, we would also like to mention um, beep. For those of you who are still coming up with a project idea or who plan on pitching on our second pitch day, um, these project pitches serve as good examples to model your upcoming pitch on. We have added some project pitch slides to this presentation, and when you are up, uh, you will be asked to give a brief explanation of what your project is and who you are looking for to join your project. Beep. This is going to be the order in which people present. We will first have external projects pitch, and then uh, student member projects will pitch. Beep. For those of you who are external pitches, you are up first, and we would ask that you please target your pitches to be about five minutes long. Beep. Uh, we will now present uh, Julie Ma and Neil McLon from the Careers Cyber Team. And I'm going to have to apologize. I misspelled uh, Neil's last name, I believe. Um, but I did use his last name as revealed in, uh, in, in, in discourse. Discord, so uh, it, was an, it was an honest mistake. I hope. No worries. <laughs> okay, so Wes, I'd like to share my screen. So can I? Uh... Please, I am in the process of stopping. Oh, okay. All right. So um, I actually targeted this for a little bit more than five minutes, so I'll just skip some of the slides. Um, can you guys see my slides? You don't have to cut it too short. But <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> All right. So uh, my name is Julie Ma. I'm the program manager for both the Northeast and career cyber teams. And I'd like to give you a quick overview of what the cyber teams are trying to do and, uh, and then tell you how to join the cyber teams if you're interested. So the Northeast and career cyber teams uh, both have the same goal, uh, which is to make cyber infrastructure more readily accessible to researchers at small and medium-sized institutions in 10 states, um, six, six in careers and four in Northeast. And um, the goal is to uh, uh, find small and medium-sized institutions where they may not have critical mass to support research computing facilitators on campus. So that's quite a few terms. Let's see if we can define them. First, what is cyber infrastructure? Well, cyber infrastructure is all of the computing systems, data storage, advanced instruments, the data repositories, the tools, and people that are linked together with software and high performance networks to improve research productivity. And what all of that means is um, big computers, big storage, big ne fast networks, that enable breakthroughs that are not otherwise possible. So what is a research computing facilitator? Well, a research computing facilitator is someone who combines technical knowledge and a strong interpersonal skills to help researchers who are at a crossroads of transitioning beyond their desktop to cyber infrastructure. And there's quite a lot involved with that because cyber infrastructure is usually not located in your office or even uh, on your campus in some, at, at times. And uh, it, re it requires you to access these resources, these computing resources that are totally in a totally different way than you would if, if you were working off of your desktop. And uh, it's widely recognized that for uh, researchers to make good use of cyber infrastructure, it's really helpful to have a facilitator, but it's really hard to find facilitators. So our program is working to develop the pool of facilitators that are available, partly by exposing students such as yourselves to this whole world earlier in your career. <clears throat> so, 
So why do we need these facilitators again? Well, they really help to facilitate the transition um, for, for the researchers to the, the advanced computing resources. And the reason that they're so, that they're so necessary is because, uh, as I said earlier, you, it's a totally different type of compute environment than you used to work on. But uh, as a, uh, to do this well, you have to have expertise, scholarly expertise, and know how researchers work. And research, every research problem is different. It depends on the domain of science it's in. It depends on what kind of tools they're using. And oftentimes, researchers don't have the time to keep up with all of these different types of technology. Um, and also, they have varying degrees of technical knowledge and expertise. So facilitators, unlike the researchers who are focused on one research project, facilitators are focused on helping people move their work um, to the cyber infrastructure. So they keep up with the tools and the technologies and keep up to date on what the coolest tools are, the best methods are to do things. And so if you combine them with a researcher, it enables the researcher to make use of this, these um, technologies a lot more quickly and move their science forward. So it's really satisfying to be a research computing facilitator because you can, are right at that, you are helping a researcher right at that point where you can really enable them to make a huge leap, le huge leaps and bounds in what they're doing. And you get to see a lot of different types of projects because you basically do engagements where you're involved with the, the researchers enough for just long enough to get them going on the new facilities and then you can go on to the next project and the reason that facilitators are so hard to find right now is there's not really a degree program anywhere in the u.s right, right now and certainly not in any ubiquitous fashion that teaches people how to be a facilitator you have to have good compute skills you have to also have some good interpersonal skills you have to have a curiosity which is why i um the name of this talk is are you curious uh, and you have to have an interest in being able to jump between different types of technologies, different types of science, and really apply computing to solve a lot of different types of problems. <clears throat> so, is facilitation for you? Well, again, are you curious? Um, do you love your major, but do you also love learning about all different types of projects that are going on, all different types of subjects? And do you enjoy collaborating on projects that involve computing? If your answer to all three of these is yes, research computing facilitation could be a really interesting field for you to learn about and even um, pursue as a profession. So how does the Northeast and career cyber teams work? Well, so Northeast, we're both basically doing the same thing. We started this process in Northeast about three and a half years ago, and careers has now been going for about six months. And uh, the idea is to have experiential learning opportunities where student facilitators like yourself are assigned to a project and so a researcher has a problem they need to move from their desktop into cyber infrastructure so they submit a project and then we find student facilitators to help with that and then we pair them with a mentor that actually knows something about the domain science that this research is in and set all three of you off on a path for three to six months to move the science forward and uh, we've done this in Northeast about 45 times. We've got about 10, 12 projects going in careers right now. And uh, with the goal of doing 72 over the next three years. And through this process, um, we, one, help to move science forward, which is always very important. Uh, and we give student facilitators the opportunity to see a lot of different types of projects. Um, the second prong of our approach is to develop tools and resources so that the, um, so students have just-in-time access to all kinds of information that they need to do a project well. So just really quickly, our project workflow, the researchers miss a project, then we find a student and a mentor, put them together and move them forward, the, um, uh, and set them off on this um, path to move the science forward over a three to six month period. And you can get either a stipend or credit through ARCO. So it's really flexible and there's a lot of projects constantly being posted. And uh, so it's a really interesting um, program to get involved with. And we're really excited to work with our coast on this because it's a really great opportunity to give a lot of students exposure to what we're doing. 
So just to give you a quick idea of a few projects, um, we have one right now which we are recruiting for actively, which is the genome sequencing of the Bornean rock frog. It's a fascinating frog. You can learn all about it on the portal, and I can tell you more about it. Um, we also have um, a, a light scattering problem. We have, and we also have uh, a learning, uh, machine learning of protein-to-protein uh, -protein interaction. So we have all different kinds of things going on. And you can see what all of the projects are that are going on, both that have already been done and that are also currently recruiting on a place called the Cyber Team Portal. Uh, since I've already gone way over my time, I'm not going to talk too much about it except to ask you all to go check out the Cyber Team Portal. You can either look at any cyberteam.org, which is where the Northeast projects are, and the Borneo and Frog project is there in particular. You can also go to careers-ct.cyberinfrastructure.org to see the careers um, projects that are underway. You can also just go to connect.ci, which is the landing page for seven cyber teams across the country that are all doing some variant of this. If you have any questions about any of this, please email me, jma, at mghpcc.org, or you can email um, Neil, who will drop his, uh, his uh, <laughs> email into uh, the chat. With that, thank you all very much. Um, I don't know, do we do questions now, Wes, or do we do them at the end? Uh, we could do a, a few now, um, if there are any. Um, I do want to point out that Neil also has a uh, Discord channel on our Discord server. So, uh, you know, if you want to, if you want to drop some informal things into there as well, it's Careers uh, Cyber Team, I believe. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Wes. All right. I think uh, if if uh, let's see. I think if uh, there are no questions, what we'll do is we'll, we'll ask you guys uh, to to you know they'll they'll be putting. We don't do a lot of questions uh, during the pitches, um, but um, you know we'll certainly ask some in 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 the, in the chat and elsewhere. And uh, hopefully you guys will be available on next Friday for us as well. Uh, yes, and I apologize that I wasn't running in full screen mode. I'm sorry. I was uh, trying to get this done in a rush. So if you couldn't see the whole slide deck, uh, we will share the slides with you guys so that you can take a look at them more uh, and see all the words that were written on them uh, at your leisure. Understood. And we do appreciate that. Um, you know, it's it's uh, you can see that this isn't always the uh, least. Uh, we have issues sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Jim Baker, the Nix Foundation. I think I have your yeah. slides unless you want unless you want to present. Uh, I prefer that you. I, I was just trying to do sharing, and it's giving me some heartache. So, when, if you'd be able to share those, okay, thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Jim Baker. I work at the uh, Linux Foundation. Uh, as most of you know, uh, Linux is not just a operating system; it's a religion. <laughs> So I'm here to preach. Oh, no, no, just, just kidding. Uh, Linux Foundation has a big umbrella of projects, uh, over a thousand. I think we're up to like 1,400 different projects. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about the networking part of Linux Foundation. Um, next slide, please. So here's some statistics uh, about the Linux Foundation and, and kind of the market penetration that we have. Um, you know, I, I, I share this just uh, as a reminder how pervasive Linux has become. Uh, when people ask me what is Linux, you know, I, I could drone on about, uh, you know, uh, kicking windows out of my life and stuff like that, but, but that's not really relevant to most people. Instead, I say it is the operating system that runs the cloud. Because as, as you can see, uh, about 90% of the workloads out there run on top of Linux, and uh, that's quite the claim to fame. Um, next slide. Okay, so just a bit about the Linux Foundation, the way it's structured. Um, there are what's called umbrella projects, of which uh, Linux Foundation networking is one. Within there, we have a whole host of um, individual projects doing all kinds of things from orchestration uh, to qualifying uh, complete software stacks. Um, um, SDN controllers, 
um, uh, vector packet processing, uh, all kinds of uh, different projects uh, focused on uh, anything to do with networking. So as you can see in the bottom line there, um, about 60 to 70 percent of, of the world's uh, telco networks operate with our software, the Link Foundation networking software. Uh, so by combining, you know, the um, by combining the efforts of all these telco companies, we we really leverage the value of open source and and uh, innovation is accelerated. Uh, so it's it's kind of odd that uh, some of our um, uh, partner companies comment to us occasionally that we're kind of the United Nations of, of software because uh, all players are welcome. Uh, what's interesting to me personally is um, open source software is not subject to the, all the embargoes that the uh, of relationships with the Chinese. So our big one of our biggest partners is China Mobile. Uh, they're the biggest uh, mobile telco operator in the world uh, and, and and they behave that way. <laughs> In, in our environment, bringing uh, great skills and uh, lots of great ideas. So it's really refreshing to be a part of the world that's all about collaboration and cooperation um, and um, not so much conflict. Next slide, please. Okay, so getting down to the specifics of the project. I. I ventured into the, uh, you know, what is uh, Linux Foundation and, and networking. So now, now the details. Um, there's a network automation platform, uh, we call it ONAP, and this, this platform is really uh, the key enabling um, uh, orchestration layer for, for 5G. And for those of you who aren't necessarily clear on what uh, orchestration is doing in your in your network, it's, uh, it's doing things like uh, spinning up new services, um, doing provisioning of um, um, of your DSL uh, LAN uh, uh, with you know at your carrier, so they use they use it to automate all sorts of different tasks. Uh, kind of the the biggest innovation most recently is uh, closed loop control systems. And simply put, um, this is this is where you're constantly monitoring your your infrastructure and you make changes. Uh, on, on the fly, you know, based on um, uh, conditions in the network. Standard example is if, if you're uh, streaming Monday Night Football uh, and it's a, a really popular game, say it's the Super Bowl and not just a regular uh, Monday Night Football. Well, you might want more content delivery um, servers throughout the network to uh, queue up your content so that you, you get this hierarchical distribution network set up. And that's what uh, your network automation platform is doing for you. It, it spans vast multi-data multi center networks and, and provides that orchestration uh, that brings us the web and, and the internet experiences we've uh, uh, grown to count on. Um, okay, so within ONAP, um, you, you, I left a, a bunch of links in here um, where you can find out more about ONAF, but within there, the specific task uh, on the next slide um, is to uh, do basic usability testing through the uh, the portal. So what we're doing here is uh, asking for volunteers to help us uh, um, basically follow the documentation. That was my five minute timer. Oops, okay, uh, follow the documentation, perform a number of tasks. Uh, you'll be using some key subsystems like uh, OpenVPN, OpenStack, ONAP, uh, and becoming familiar with uh, JIRA and Confluence tools. Um, technologies uh, of interest are Java, JavaScript, VMs, and open source. Uh, <clears throat> so the, the kind of people that might be interested in this are obviously network oriented and or interested in, in, in telecommunications at large. Uh, you'll be rubbing shoulders with uh, uh, engineers and uh, architects from IBM and AT&T. The list is there. Uh, China Mobile, as I already mentioned. Uh, and it, you'll have an opportunity to uh, interact on, on a personal level in uh, in both meetings and you know kind of presenting your results uh, at, at the end. Uh, so um, next slide. 
or is that the last one? I think that's the last one. Okay, so let's just say that's the last one and are there any questions? Okay, I think I failed to include my um, contact information in the uh, uh, in the prezo. Um, I can um, I'll, I'll throw it in the chat and attempt to get on your your chat service uh, and, and put it in there as well. Um, one last call for questions. And but yeah, by the way, if you know if it, if you have problems reaching anybody, I have all the contact information, so so I can also you know serve as an intermediary. Um, very nice. Thank, thanks for the opportunity to present, and uh, I'll uh, look forward to any detailed questions on email. Awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Um, next would be... Click to add title. That would be a mistake. Uh, Steve Huss Liederman, ODE. Yeah, do you want me to drive this, Wes, or? It's up to you. I've got it up there, or you can do it. Whichever is best. It's easier if I do it, but if you want to do it, that's fine. Whatever you like, Wes. Okay, let's let's go this way. That way, maybe we can uh, kind of. Dr Otherwise, okay. I, I don't have anything to do. <laughs> okay. So it's great to be able to talk to you as our co-students. Um, I'm Stephen Hussleiterman. I'm the project coordinator for the Open Energy Dashboard, or OED. OED is a humanitarian project trying to do a social good, in this case, to support sustainability. Next slide, please. I thought the easiest way to tell you about it was to show you. Um, just for fun, I spun up a quick version of one that uses RPI. So on the left, you can see names of buildings at RPI. And the lower four lines on this line graph show you actual data that comes off a of meter, uh, the hardware that we collect. And the upper line, uh, as you can see in the name of the group in the hover there, it says Science Center and Union. So that's showing you some aggregation results. It's summing the values. So you can get an idea of overall usage for both of those buildings. And as you look across, you'll see that um, there's patterns in the data. You can see when this institution was on break and when a meter failed. Uh, this isn't your real data. This is from another institution. I don't have access to your hardware. So next slide, please. And then just to show you another example of uh, the type of graphics and analytics we do this is i just grabbed a jpeg of rpi and you can see some buildings have circles on them possibly hopefully your resolution is good enough so um, you'll see for example the science or engineering or your union and the size of that circle represents the intensity of their electricity usage so you're able to sort of visually scan across an institution and see how much power they're using in different parts of their campus visually so beep I should have said at the beginning, the first slide was sort of an overview I understand you use later. So I'm not gonna use it till the end here. Um, I know when you wanna join a project, you're often interested in the technologies. When developers join us, they often work in one area. They have to know the technologies only in that area or possibly a subset of them. Um, I was a professor for 25 years. I um, do this as an educational project. So we will help you learn technologies and get resources to do that as you would like and is appropriate. But to talk about the different groups, the backend or server, we're a JavaScript-based project. We use promises to control events. We have a database, which is Postgres, and then we use PG Promise to interface between JavaScript and that. And then on the front end, we use TypeScript, which is a superset of JavaScript. Again, promises. We use React to control the page, Redux to hold states, and Plotly is our graphics package. And then in terms of testing, which we do a lot of, we mostly use the Chai and Mocha frameworks to run unit testing on the code. And then there's some other technologies that really span different um, parts of the project. Um, I, I had a new slide, I forgot about Node.js, so that's on there. Um, Express for web requests, Moment, because we deal a lot with um, dates and times from meters. 
React International makes this multilingual. Webpack bundles it up, and Lodash just has a whole bunch of JavaScript utilities that we take advantage of. So again, this is a long list, but I just want to make it clear that um, you don't have to know them all, and you can learn them over time, and we'll help with that. So next slide, please. Um, I'm not going to go through tasks. This is just a small set of the tasks we have, but I just want to note that the top are simpler things, generally fewer technologies, things that are easier to get into, and then lower down in the list are harder. Where you wind up is a conversation we have with each developer or team about what they want to do and where they're at. So bug fixes usually only touch a small piece of code. Um, enhancements start touching larger parts of developed code. Sometimes people want to do deployment things. We use Docker for our deployments. We'd like to upgrade that. An upgrade like we need to remove moment because it's been declared obsolete. Um, that would touch a large amount of the code base because it's all over. A new feature, you'd have to develop your own code for that. And then this year, we're focusing on a resource generalization. And that means we're going through design phases. We are, we are mocking up how we're going to do the development, how we have to do that development. And then we have to be in constant contact with users to make sure we're doing what they want. That's quite a large effort and would require all kinds of different skills and people come to it in different ways. So again, where you would start and what you want to do depends on your goals and where you're at. Can, can you just click just to the left of the light bulb? That'll take you back, I think, to slide one or go back to slide one, whichever, to the left of the light bulb. <laughs> Magic, okay. So let me talk what happens when you join our project. Um, I, as the project lead, will uh, be involved in half hour to hour and a half video meetings with you every week as an individual or with your team as appropriate. Those meeting times depend on what you need, what we talk about depends on where you're at in the project and what you need help with and direction and stuff like that. We offer email help as a project, we hang out on your Discord channel, and we actually have developer pages that tell you how do you install this on your machine as a developer, how do you get test data in there, what's our requirements to do pull requests to integrate things into it, other information that will help you as a developer. We welcome all developers, whether you consider yourself beginner or advanced. We just care that you're motivated. Um, we will work with you to place you at a place where you can have a good experience. Uh, I will say, though, if you're going to do it for one semester through Arcos, you probably even need to know JavaScript or be able to learn it pretty quickly because that's at the heart of the whole project. And on that last bullet, there's, a, there's some information about our GitHub site, our website, how to email me, and I'll also hang out in the uh, Discord channel as I can. So I'd welcome anyone from Arcos who'd like to work on the project, and I thank you for your time and hope you have a great day. Bye-bye. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. Um, let's see. Uh, next up is... Uh, William He, uh, Arts Socialization. William, are you around? We may not have gotten in touch with William fast enough. Let me see if he's in the list. Okay, we... Nope. Okay, my bad. Um, we, will, uh, we will probably have William on, on, uh, on Tuesday. Um, Tiffany? Hello. So it's actually me and another student, Yue Chen, but would it be okay if I shared my screen? Sure. Let me uh, stop sharing. Thank you. So hello, hello, ARCO students. I'm Tiffany Zito, a senior neuroscience and psych dual major, and I'm here with Yue Chen, a senior cognitive science major, and we're here to pitch to you guys today. So as some of you may have noticed, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Shocker. And basically, you know, you're hanging out if you're human. You're probably angry, like Shia LaBeouf right here. And on the other hand, if you're a dog, you might be having a great time. Lots of walks, lots of treats. Never have to hold your pee. But my assumption is that everyone in this meeting is probably a frustrated human, like Shia LaBeouf. So what are we going to do about it? That's where our Project Social comes in. Yeah, so I assume everyone wants to be as happy as possible, even like the dog also want to spend our social cycle safely in time of pandemic. 
So that's when our team social comes with one of this year's first was the Innovation Studio Challenge, which ever kind of happened every four years. Very excited. Uh, just a recap. So this goal of the challenge was to come up with an idea that can impact society and globe in positive ways. And our idea was to create a social uh, called web application. Uh, it is like a game-like system that integrates new members into a community by helping them create and foster lasting bonds through various, uh, various challenges and competitions that promote intra-group cooperation. So as we can see on this slide, um, this semester there will be seven major uh, outcomes for this uh, challenge and for our project. So uh, see any of you are interested in any of them. So the first one will be the AI powered matching engine. So the goal of this uh, matching engine is to match users that's going to be more likely to form better re relationship with each other, use the power of AI. A second will be the intimacy-based intra-cooperative game challenges design. So it's just going to pro uh, provide a smoother transition from the online to in-person relationships. Uh, so currently the design is when the intimacy level is low, so game will only have chat functions. And when it's medium intimacy is going to have uh, mic access, well, higher level will means camera access or even like in-person games in the future. The third uh, outcome will be the masquerade like game launch and team room. Like all other games, they have a game lobby. Uh, but in our design, we have a masquerade uh, like design. So it's just going to allow our users to comfortably set up of their comfort zone to some person they just never know. Uh, the first one, the fourth one is going to be a friend collection passport. Basically, with this passport, it's going to record all the friends you've met and some special skills. Uh, it's just going to have a function of promote memorable and diverse friendship in the game. Uh, the fifth one will be a organization-based customization. It's like uh, you can customize your website or the game uh, based on each organization. For example, we can have RPS logo, or you can have other like schools logos. We're going to in the future, co uh, collaborate with other kind of schools or organizations. Uh, the sixth one will be a leadership uh, mentor. Just think of it as a game like NPC, but it's going to have the leadership dialogue encoded. But anyway, it's very interesting like to play around with the dialogue and the features. And the last one will be the user feedback channels, which going to further enhance user experiences, like all other apps. So my social. So I know like some of you are probably going to be doing summer arch and like when our grade had to do it, we called it the bummer arch and basically it wasn't something people were looking forward to. So, you know, we want to kind of make a change and hopefully I know everything's online, um, but hopefully some system like this is going to make it a little more interesting. So kind of help us help you change your summer arch experience. Um, in the future, we hope to use this for um, even like student orientation. Um, before first years can come in and things like that. Um, basically, at the moment, we have a couple of tasks that we've thought of so far for you guys to do. So one of them would be um, kind of building mini games. So part of this system is you're going to have like little challenges and some of them are online. And that's where you guys could come in um, and potentially, you know, help build those mini games. I mean, like how many other projects are you going to get to like build your own video game? I don't know. I think that's cool. Um, Something else we have is that students might be able to create surveys and or feedback forms. And that's just more like more on the admin side and things like that for us to help us figure out what we can do um, better. And a third task we've thought of so far is basically creating this interactive and customizable web user face in, um, design. And basically that would help you get experience basically any type of app or coding that you do, right? Like the point is that humans are going to use it. So this is just more like a specific tailored experience towards that. And as of now, um, we're working with the Dean of Student Success, the Dean of First Year Experience, as well as the Summer Arch Coordinators. And they're all on board right now. So please join our team. Sunglasses not included. That's a disclaimer. So. Yeah, so these are kind of the basic um, tasks for you guys. So if you guys like are kind of new to programming, these are some tasks I definitely can teach you how to do. Uh, but also, if you're interested in other outcomes, also talk to us. Uh, we There's a lot of freedom for you guys. So, yay. Thanks. And I'll drop my email in the chat. So if people want to email uh, me, and then I can forward some of the emails to UA as well if um, any of the questions are for her. But thank you so much. 
Thank you. Let's see. Next one is uh Professor Mushtaq, are you available? Uh, yes. Hello, Arcos. Hello, everybody. Hello, Wes. I Hi. am here. Yeah. Hi. Okay. So I have your uh, can slide. I? Go ahead. If you want. Uh, to can I share? Yeah, share I, I'd like to share. Yep, yes. Go ahead. I think I was just like a minute ago making changes. Uh, okay. So hello, everybody. And thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to present. Uh, what I'm presenting is an application known as Instant Tutor. And first of all, the motivation behind this, and because we were teaching like large classes in the pandemic, during the pandemic, and what I noticed personally was there is a significant rise in the overall demand for one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Uh, and especially with large classes, like of course we have office hours, we have help available, but then uh, there were many students who, who couldn't get it uh, when they wanted. And this is like, uh, I, I figured that this was like equally relevant in pre-pandemic days as well. Like when doing a homework assignment, you find yourself stuck. Maybe you don't have access to office hours right then and there, right? So given this is the age of personalization, uh, why should we be constrained by, okay, a so-and-so -so slot is available for so-and-so office hours or, or like help is available for a certain thing. So what, what this platform is going to do, this instant tutor is going to do, is that it is going to be a knowledge sharing peer-to-peer -peer platform. So what are peer-to-peer -peer platforms? Think of this as Uber of tutoring. So everybody's familiar with, with Uber or Instacart. I think it's called Instacart. Or, or like other peer-to-peer -peer platforms like uh, Airbnb. So this is like the Air Airbnb of uh, tutoring. So let's see what, what exactly that means. The fundamental idea is to instantly connect students with educators, tutors, people with any specific skill. So you don't have, there is no like a uh, barrier to who can help uh, with what, right? So maybe I can connect a student with somebody who, who otherwise like um, not a mentor or not a TA, like within the RPI uh, campus, that's, that is, right? So it is going to be a peer to peer system that facilitates like the maximum resource utilization. And that's what uh, P2P systems do. Right? So we have resources available. It's just that they are underutilized in the sense that somebody could have helped you with the homework, but but obviously they are not the TA or the mentor that's available right then and there. And so they weren't able to help you, right? So that's the fundamental idea. And what is going to be the process? So the process is something like this, is like a high level process. Of course, we can go and add uh, like other functionality as well. So let's say you are a student stuck with some problem and you share the detail of that problem. Let's say take a picture and say that you're stuck here or, or you're confused here or whatever, right? The platform, what it does is based on certain matching algorithms, it, it goes and matches a tutor based on their specific skill set. And then I'm assuming that there is this tutor and then there is the student that exists, right? So they have like this, this um, user that exists. And then eventually this, uh, the, tutor, uh, the tutors who are the potential matches, they bid on that request because like depending on whether they are available right then and there or whenever the like help is needed. And finally, the student gets to select from the potential list of bidding tutors. So either the tutors can answer via chat or leave their contact info. That's, that's uh, can be decided, whatever is, is more convenient. But essentially it's, as I said, it's more like when you need a ride, with Uber, you just like get it then and there, depending on the, the best potential matches. That's exactly what we're doing here. This is the high level process. Uh, moving on. So what we need in the application, of course, this has to be built on with, like from scratch because this is just an idea and I do have like some design uh, available, but like the basic design process available, but this is just like uh, an idea as of now. So we need to create the help request and then the matching process. Uh, payment procedure. So also like this could be an additional functionality. I haven't thought completely through this, but definitely yes, because the idea here is that we want people to utilize um, 
resources as, as, as much as possible throughout the RPI campus. What that means is, like for tutors, there has to be something in it. So either like they can ask for payment if we are scheduling for like long time, or if it's right then and there, they can have like their own, um, like depending on their time, they can charge what they would like to charge. They can also help for free because we have a rating and review system and based on like how good your help was or how good you answer that question, you get a rating and a review, just like in Uber, right? Except for the, the location part, it's like very similar to that. And uh, so this is like the entire overall process that we need to develop. And here are the details. So again, because we have like this time constraint, I wouldn't go into the details of like everything. Essentially, uh, the student creates a help request. Uh, we match with a matching algorithm. Tutors bid on that help request. And then depending on the tutors uh, like ranking or rating or their uh, how much they are charging, the student can make a confirmation and then tutors can answer or leave contact info for the student. Um, yeah, and this, this is going to be a rating based system, just like any peer to peer system is. So the student should be able to rate tutors, tutors should be able to rate students. And that's how we maintain quality on the platform. Uh, okay, so having said that, the app itself or the platform itself would obviously require these, these elements, the login screen, the tutor screen, the student screen, admin and analytics, of course, I'm not going into like ton of detail. Uh, I do have the workflow in mind, like the person should come in and register, you can select a role, you can be both a student and a tutor because it depends, right? Uh, and then you can select the role whenever you log in, and then the options would be generated accordingly and allocation will happen based on whether you are a tutor at that point in time or you are a student. Uh, again, so the rest I think I already talked through. Uh, I do have some idea of like how the student screen features, like how the student screen should look like versus how the tutor screen should look like. Again, uh, we can discuss that. I'm uh, skipping through this like real quick. Um, what what all, yeah, so the things that we need to decide is that do we need a validation process for the tutor? The short answer that I have right now is I don't think so because uh, then the whole point of having a peer-to-peer -peer system is defeated because the the whole point is that anybody could be a tutor and the way they maintain that their their quality is by getting ratings and so uh, we don't we won't uh, most likely do that in terms of the technology stack what uh, i'm proposing is that we use flask python bootstrap again like as i said these are the things that that still need to be decided so then i'm open to suggestions discussion and take it from there and uh, that's it. If you're interested, that's my email. That's my RPI email. Feel free to contact me. Uh, that's the high level idea. And that's, that's all I have. Uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to present. Thank you, Professor Bushta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, I think we have one more. Wrong screen. No, that's right. All right, we have one more, and then uh, I think we go off to. Uh... Yeah, uh, John, John Mekic, um Pyclarian, I think it is. Do you want me to, to present, or do you want to? Uh, sure, you can present. There we go. Okay, so. Right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is John Mikik. I'm a PhD student at the Department of Cognitive Science. And uh, I'm looking for some people to help me and my uh, partner, Jenny, my working partner, Jenny, on uh, developing PyClarian. PyClarian is a Python library for simulating human behavior and building artificial intelligences using the Clarion cognitive architecture. Um, if you're wondering what's a cognitive architecture, well, in cognitive science, we have this idea that the mind is the software of the brain, and um, a cognitive architecture is a proposal about the structure of that software. So we're looking for one to two new team members, um, and uh, we're developing entirely in Python, though we are using types. Uh, we have tasks at various levels of difficulty. 
So starting from testing for usability and correctness and adding documentation. And then uh, for more advanced uh, contributors, uh, we can have you adding new components, adding reporting and visualization tools and so on. So this would be a pretty good point, entry point to AI or cognitive science research uh, if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Uh, and yeah, that's it for me. Looking forward to hearing the wrong window showing you. I'm sorry, what's going on? I think the wrong window is showing. You have one new message. I am not. I think you're sharing multiple things at the same time. Huh. Hold on, just uh, let, me, let me try this one more. Okay. You guys are seeing nothing now, right? Yes. Okay. Yep, it works. Okay, is that better? Yes. Sorry about that, John. Uh, it's just um, I can't. I can't yeah. see what I'm actually sh what I'm actually presenting when I'm doing this. Is the problem? <laughs> okay, yeah, so so here's a much nicer view of of that um, window, I guess. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, and I think uh, Jenny, you're working with Jenny Shen, who is uh, who has been a, a member of Arcos before, I believe. So that's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I just messed that up. Okay. So now I want to do. All right. Um, All right, so now we're going to go into our, our member pitches. Um, all of these you've seen before, at least four months ago, you saw them. Uh, and, and if you stuck around and, and watched our, uh, and watched our um, presentations at the end of the semester, you saw them then again as well. So uh, let's get started. I, um, Excelender? Um, hi, I hope you can hear me this time. Hey, okay. So, hi, I'm Sneha Ranjit. I'm the project lead for In Calendar. And so, we're basically an online calendar for all the dates and deadlines across all the classes that everyone takes. It works for both students and professors. So, you don't have to open like 300 PDFs or I don't know, other calendars or like accidentally put your, I don't know, schedules in the wrong place or whatever. So this is basically just making everything in one place so you don't have to do anything, any extra work. So in terms of like, I don't know, okay, the stack is just SQL, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And so we definitely need someone who can work on our SQL server. And if you're not into SQL, if you don't want to learn SQL or you don't want to work on that part, you can also work on the more front end of things, which is which would be all the HTML and stuff, which is also pretty not too hard to learn or anything. So if you're also not that experienced in programming and stuff, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are not that hard to learn for you guys. So that would be great. And if you're not a complete beginner, please join us because well, we need members. And I have a lot of plans this semester because we plan to work on an API for getting classes and stuff, which I didn't mention here. And we also need to work more on the professor side of things so that professors can upload schedules and everything so everybody else can access it. So we have a lot planned for the semester because, well, this is my second semester doing a calendar. So yeah, we're kind of new in terms of old our course project. Yeah, that's me. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Lavender, I think, is up next. That is correct. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Interesting. Right. 
So if you heard me last semester, and even if you didn't hear me last semester, this is the Lavender Programming Language. It's a pure functional programming language. It's a pure functional statically typed uh, programming like experimental programming language that's meant to explore um, static type systems. Um, it's meant to enable aggressive inlining and constant folding and exploring how to do this with a static type system with no garbage collection. Uh, it's the current iteration uh, is implemented in Rust. Syntactically, it's kind of inspired by Haskell. Semantically, it's also kind of inspired by Haskell, but less so because it also has some stuff that is vaguely related to other languages like Python and Scala from the past two iterations of the language. Uh, last semester, last semester we did a lot of parsing and semantic uh, AST construction, but this semester um, the plan is to work on the type checker and to uh, explore the design space um, in Lavender for that because uh, there is a lot of uh, a lot of stuff to a lot of small decisions to make with regards to type checking and exactly how to implement some of the finer semantics of this language. Um, so same as last semester, I'm looking for a small, fairly small number of people. Um, if you know type theory or really are interested in type systems, this is the semester for you. Um, if you're not interested in types, the semester may be a little boring for you. So uh, keep that in mind when you are deciding on the project. Um, but you can contact me on Discord on there on the bottom left or via email. And if you want to take a look at the project, you can check out the GitHub link below. There's also, uh, if you want a syntax example, you can look at the standard library, which I'll put in the chat as well. And uh, that's it for me. So do I say beep or something? Yeah, I guess beep, yeah. <laughs> uh, so so let's go on. I think the next one is uh, Yaks N. Hello, hello. Can everyone hear me? Yes, at least I can. Okay. So, hello, everyone. Uh, name is Richard, and I'll be pitching about Yaks. I'm just going to assume that you guys know Yaks. Uh, I hope you guys have been using it for all your semesters and not other variants. Cough, cough. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, as you may see, uh, we have moved the original YAX from Rust old-fashioned style to a more modern-looking dark mode. Dark mode is our only um, uh, selling point at the moment of time. <laughs> uh, YAX.N is built on Vue.js uh, as its front end and Python and Postgres at its back end with Docker containers. Uh, we are one of the largest groups in Arcos and have all sorts of core automations to assist you on your development. We welcome all types of developers uh, with experience or no experience. Uh, we have tons of work to uh, fix and add, like adding in a grad requirement or a major template uh, to assist students to figure out their schedule. We also aim to fix uh, the mobile UX experience and other small bugs. If you feel you got what it takes, you guys can click on the Slack link on the slide or DM me directly on uh, Discord. If you guys are not modern at all and prefer the old fashioned way, you guys could also email me too. Thanks. Beep. Beep. Okay, that, beep, that first beep sent me too far down. We missed Tutor Base and uh, Poll Buddy. We will hit those now. Sorry about that. Tutor Base? Jason, Jeremy? I'm getting flag. I'm getting flag on chat. <laughs> uh. <laughs> OK, 
Okay. Um, I think we will maybe do this one on Tuesday. Um, Sounds good. Yeah, election participants, I didn't see either of them. Okay. Uh, poll buddy, are you guys here? Works for me. Oh, yeah. You would have to be. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Always here, everywhere. All right. So, hello. I am the PM for Poll Buddy. So, if you've been in our coast in the last year, year and a half or so, you've probably heard of Poll Buddy by now. But for everyone new, we are aiming to replace the eye clicker system, which definitely is useful now that most people aren't anywhere near the eye clicker system that would be at RPI because it does not work over distances. So we're looking to make a, a solution that works that is cheaper, easier to use, and more powerful, as well as being more fun. So this is primarily based in React for the front end and Express and MongoDB for the back end with a bit of uh, Docker and some other fun stuff mixed in. As of where we are right now, we have about 90% of the front end pages done, more or less. We have about half the back end functionality working and we are really aiming to get a lot of that working together, as well as adding to the documentation, which we found to be quite lacking at this point. So we have a bunch of stuff that can be done. We are always open to people who are new to development. We've got a ton of things we could have you do. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You can contact me at the bottom right there. Basically, just send an email and a little bit about you, and you're good to go. You're supposed to beep. <laughs> I figured you'd figure it out. <laughs> Temperature. Sheldon? Can you hear me? We can. Hello, everyone. I'm Sheldon Jackson, and I'll be the lead for the Temperature Project this semester. Temperature Project is an application that recommends music and creates playlists based on users, music listening history, and the weather data on the day that they listen to their music. Last semester, we made a foundation for the app setting up the back end and the front end and the database. So this semester, we have lots of work to be done and are looking for members, both with experience and without experience, for front end programming, which is in React, written in JavaScript, back end programming, which is in Python, and even machine learning, which is in Python. If anyone's interested, send me an email at my RPI email listed on the slide. Next slide. Mr. Gaskins? Justin? Yep. Hi, everybody. I'm Justin Gaskins. I'm the project lead for RPI Campus Map. Um, we've been a project with Arcos for the past couple semesters. And really what it is, is just an interactive map um, to help anybody find anything they need on or around campus, right? So this is basically aimed to replace the previous campus maps that we've had, um, some like listed on the info website for RPI, some you just have to find, like the ones that are like given out um, for NRB week. And those are all just like static maps or not great missing locations, things like that. So we decided to make our own. Um, so yeah, we're looking for all skill levels, um, whether they're, you know, you're a beginner or you're more advanced. Um, we're primarily working with JavaScript and TypeScript. Uh, most of the HTML is already written, um, and our goals for this semester is to continue building up our web pages, um, really work on our documentation because that's one thing that we're really lacking. Um, testing is going to be a big thing this semester and a little bit of bug fixes. And since I'll be graduating next semester, well, this semester actually, um, you know, we're trying to look for people who will take the project forward and, you know, be as passionate as we are about working on it and providing something like this for all these students and visitors to RPI. So yeah, there are no um, there are no low priority things that we're going to be doing. They're all high importance, regardless of skill level. You'll have something that makes a lasting impact. So if you want more information, you can check out the GitHub repo that's there, or you can message me on Discord, or you can email me whatever you like. Beep. Benji, your name's not on. Your name's. Yes. <laughs> um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Benji. Uh, I'm the product manager of uh, FLOM, or Folsom Library Occupancy Monitor. 
Um, it is a web application that serves two purposes. The first is to provide a live map of which study rooms are open for students so that they can see um, if there's room available, availability um, before they go to the library. And the second is to uh, produce statistics for the library staff so that they can make informed decisions on, let's say, like budget and stuff like that. Um, the stack consists of Django uh, and SQL Lite on the back end. Um, and then we also have some hardware included that will be going into the rooms. Um, we have very ambitious goals for this semester. We are hoping to get um, full implementation in the library. Um, since I'm graduating, I hope that um, we can make this happen. Uh, what else? Uh, we are looking for two to three members. Um, that will work on the front end, uh, mostly in React. This will be displaying the statistics um, nicely so that you can um, kind of see patterns um, on library usage. And we're looking for one to two people with some familiar familiarity in uh, embedded systems to help with uh, the hardware side of things. Um, so if you want to be part of an awesome project that will hopefully make a lasting impact on uh, campus, um, message me on Discord, uh, Benji, uh, P. Thanks. Leon. Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Leon, uh, and this is Open Circuits. Uh, Open Circuits is a project I started almost five years ago now, and has been at our coast for at least three years for, with great success. Um, we are an online free digital circuit designer where users can design and simulate um, circuits. Uh, our tech stack mostly consists of TypeScript and HTML slash CSS uh, with React newly added. Um, and we use Golang for our backend. Um, for the past few semesters now, I've been really trying to emphasize clean, good, and consistent code and as much documentation as possible. And it is still all coming together, but I do try and go over as much as possible and try to be as helpful as I can to anyone new to the project. And so I'd recommend this project for anyone interested in joining a large, well-established project, someone who wants to learn the basics of web apps, or someone who likes circuitry and that kind of stuff. Um, we really do accept people of all different levels and skills and programming. Uh, and yeah, that's Open Circuits. Uh, you can contact me at the information there at the bottom if you're interested in joining. Thank you. Uh, beep. Cheetor. Hey, can you guys hear me? Nice banana costume. Yes. <laughs> cool. Um, hi, guys. I'm Rory. Um, I'm the guy on the right. Uh, Ace is uh, our project lead. He's on the left in the banana costume. So we're part of uh, Tidor. Tidor is a crowdsourcing education app. So it basically pairs up uh, mentors to mentees with whatever subjects uh, the, the mentees need help with. Um, we've been around for a couple semesters now, and we've restarted our project a few times. Um, but now we have it in a state where we're ready to uh, invite new members. In terms of uh, technology, we're using the Mern stack. So that's a Mongo Express, React, uh, Node, and Redux. Um, but even if you don't know any of those, we're welcoming all experience levels. So even if you, um, like I said, don't know any of those, we'd love to have you. And we can spend some time learning and getting familiar with the project before we start. And we also have some non-programming roles uh, that we'd like to offer people. So things like design, um, stuff like that. So I, we forgot to put our emails in here, but we're going to send those in the Discord chat. So if you have any questions or want to join, just let us know uh, later on. Thanks, guys. All right. And I think this is the last one for today. Um, if I missed anybody, I don't know how I skipped two. It looked perfectly fine in my browser earlier. But if I missed anybody, please let me know. But I think this is the last one for today. And it's a uh, shuttle tracker. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yep. Cool. Um, hey, everybody. My name is Matt, and I'm going to be the project manager for Shell Tracker this semester. Um, I'm assuming most of you are familiar with what Shell Tracker does by now, but if you're not, it is a web application that tracks the locations of campus shuttles, routes, and stops in real time. It's built with Go on the back end, JavaScript, and TypeScript on the front end, and there's a Postgres database. There's also a Flutter app for iOS and Android in development, and that uses Dart. Our areas of focus for this semester are going to be polishing the ETA panel so it can eventually replace the schedules that we used to use, um, completing the, uh, the feedback form by connecting that to the database, uh, fixing some bugs that still exist in the admin panel, finishing the smooth tracking feature so we can show users where shuttles are all the time, 
continuing to develop that uh, mobile app in Flutter and updating some of the project's documentation that hasn't been touched in a while. Um, this semester, we're going to be looking for just a small handful of developers to help us in these areas. You don't really need to have much experience with the technologies that we use as long as you're willing to learn them. Um, if you're interested, feel free to reach out to me at the email address at the bottom of the slide, or you can join the Shuttle Tracker Discord server at the link on the bottom. Um, thanks for your time. Awesome. Um, Frank, are we, uh, do we want to go back to, uh, to Tutor Base, or do we want to move that to Tuesday? I think actually Tutor Base listed that they couldn't pitch live. We just missed that when we put the slides together. So we will post it in the, uh, the slides channel for them, or we'll ask them. But okay. Um, so anyway, here's here's their slide. Um, you know, S summer arch uh, it brings its challenges, and then the requisite semester away that goes along with it brings others. This is the, uh, J Jason and uh, Jeremy's uh, semester away. So we were hoping that they would be able to join us live, but. Uh, we will post their slide and you will be able to access it. All right. Um, Hunter. Hello. All right. So I will be wrapping up a couple things. So basically just what's happening next class. So if you're an existing project, you hopefully presented today and so submitted your slide. But if not, then definitely send it in the pitches channel as soon as you can and submit the form. And then we can get those missed projects next week or next class, I guess, which is next week. As for potential new projects, you have another couple of days, but basically, again, still by next class, um, you want to make sure you get those pitch slides in. And if you go to the previous, uh, like, day one slide, you can find some information about how to make that pitch slide. All right, beep. Yeah, and finally, attendance. So again, it's the first week. No attendance will be taken today. We're still finalizing the process, but definitely sometime next week, you will most likely be submitting attendance. So hooray for that. But yeah, today, no worries. Beep. Oh, there's no other slides left. Nope, that's it. Um, so before we close out, I think we, we forgot one slide that should have said thank you to everybody who presented. We've got a lot of really cool possibilities this semester. I think last I checked, we were at about 148 students. Um, you know, we've gone through about 18 presentations so far. Uh, you know, I think one of the things that I would like to see us do is, is start interacting with, with some of these uh, other groups off campus. We're already really good at interacting on campus, and I expect that uh, all of these, uh, the projects that, that our, our existing students pitched are going to do very well. We've got uh, a lot of them nearing uh, minimum viable product or, or actual deployment, and that's uh, or, or even beyond that. So that's really cool. It would be really great for us to uh, to start bringing in um, to start strutting our stuff outside of RPI as well. So please consider external projects if you if you don't have something you're committed to. Um, you know, I've talked to to everybody about their projects, and I'm. You know what they can show us in a few minutes is, is not the same as uh, they're they're a lot they're a lot more exciting even than than what was able to be brought out and that was pretty good so uh, you know please kind of consider this Tuesday as Hunter said we will be doing some more pitches so if you have some, a brilliant idea or even a half baked idea let's get it up there and uh, let's see if we can make this the best semester so far any questions any any you know, anything other than about whew, what we're doing Just today. To that. Yeah. As a, a note for people who are maybe on the fence about running a project or not, please reach out to the Discord server at coordinators or really anyone. And um, lots of the project leads are very open. I'm sure they'd be willing to discuss, you know, what goes into managing a project, how hard it is. And even if you don't think you have a fully fleshed idea, why not post on the server and maybe chat with people about it. Don't be afraid. And flesh it out. Yes. Awesome. Well, we got through a lot of presentations. What we'll do on, on pitch day is we'll, we'll run through these one, you know, we'll just kind of 
put up a little slideshow. But uh, nothing else? That's it. All right. Again, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clap. You guys are welcome to clap or not. But thank you to our everybody who presented today. It, it's, uh, it's really uh, nice to see so many uh, awesome things going on. Um, you know, we had some, some pretty uh, interesting, like I said, some pretty interesting projects from a variety of different places. And uh, let's continue on. Bye. What's your slight ticking noises back? That is, yeah. I wonder where that's from. This seems this may be the heater, or my or my wife's stomping around upstairs or something. I don't know. <laughs> very, it's very rhythmic. It seems like it would not be walking. <laughs> yeah. Well, now it's gone again. Let's blame what X. Yeah, I, I heard it, and then it just disappeared again. I, I think it might be web. You hear it too, then? Sometimes. I can't hear anything. No, it stopped now. It was, it was maybe 20 seconds ago now. Yep. Very weird. Uh, it's I think there a ghost. Yes, it's probably a ghost. I think I've lost all my, my uh, skills. 30 days, and I 